Welcome to lesson 3.2. In this lesson, we're going to talk about adding rational numbers. Now, you remember rational numbers can be in the form of anything which is a decimal, which repeats or terminates, or it can also be in the form of a fraction. So we're going to start with adding fractions, and we're going to start with, and we'll end with adding decimals. Now, before we can add fractions, let's just go back to the very beginning of, of adding fractions, which are not positive and negatives, but just stick with the positives. So when you want to add one and five fifths, sorry, one fifth and two thirds, the first thing you need to know is what is the lowest common multiple of five and three? And that's asking what number does both five and three go into that's the lowest possible? Now, we know that's 15. In this case, for five and three, 15 is the only one. But there will come times when you may or may not be sure. You can multiply them, and that will give you a factor. It won't give you the lowest common factor, but it'll give you a, yes, or it'll give you multiple, but it won't give you the lowest common multiple. Um, you have to be careful when you do that because you can get very large numbers, but if you use your calculator with care, you will be able to get the correct answer. So we know that the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3, the number that they both go into evenly, which is the smallest, is 15. So what we need to do now is to figure out if the denominator is 15, what is an equivalent fraction for one-fifths to be 15? Well, if you notice, we multiply the 5 by a 3 to get 15. So we do the same thing with the 1. Multiply that by 3, and that will give you 3 here. Same thing on this side over here. 3 times 5 is 15, so 2 times 5 should give us 10. So that gives us our equivalent fractions of 3 over 15 plus 10 over 5. Now, since they both have the same denominator, now we can simply just add them. 3 plus 10 being 13. Okay? If you have problems with that, try it again and, and just review it. All right, here's a word problem. Frank has a pizza that is, that is divided up into thirds, and Bob has a pizza that is divided up into eighths. If Frank ate one-third of his pizza, and Bob ate three-eighths of his pizza, how much have they eaten together? Now we're making the assumption that the pizzas are the same size. So, because they want to be uh, how much have they eaten together, together is a word that we use for summing. So we're going to have to find the answer when you add one-third and three-eighths. So the question is, what is the lowest common multiple of three and eight? And that is 24. So we're going to take one-third plus three-eighths, and we're going to have to find equivalent fractions of a denominator of 24. So to get 3 to become a 24, we multiply it by 8. So 1 times 8, top of here will be an 8. This one here, 8 times 3 is 24, so 3 times 3 is 9. So this is what leads us to an 8 on the left and a 9 on the right. Now, they have the same denominator of 24. We can now take and simply add them. So 8 plus 9 is 17. So Frank and Bob ate 17 24ths of a pizza together. Our next step is to add integers into our fractions and have positive and negative fractions. And we have to add those. So in order to do that, we have to take a look at adding integers um, uh, as a review. Now, I'm not going to go back into algebra tiles and do all the tile stuff. We're just going to think of this in terms of positives and negatives. If I have three negatives and I put four negatives with it, three negatives and four negatives will result in seven negatives. You see the negatives are all, everything's negative, so I just have to add the three and the four. And that gives me seven negatives. Now, that's what happens when the signs are the same. You simply just add them. When the signs here are the same, that's five positives and seven positives. Put them together, and you're going to have 12 positives. Now, that's different than this next one. This next one, we have five negatives and seven positives. Now, when they're different, you have to figure out what cancels out. And when we cancel stuff, we subtract it. So take a look at which one is the largest magnitude. In this case, it's the 7. 7 has got more yellow tiles than there are 5. So when everything zeroes out, you're going to have yellow tiles left over. So we know our answer is going to be positive. Now, if I have 7 yellows, 5 reds, 7 yellows and the 5 reds will zero out with 5 of the yellows canceling out with these 5 reds here. So that means I'm going to go 7, take away 5. And that's what you end up getting, positive 2. So this is your canceling. 7 yellows, remove the 5 that cancel out because of the negative 5 here, and you'll have 2 positives left over. Now this one, I've got negative 9 so, and positive 4. That's 9 reds and 4 yellows. Nine reds take away four yellows means that you're going to have five reds left over. 
So we're going to remove nine, so we're going to remove four of the reds, which are going to be canceling out with this positive four, leaving us with negative five. Now, let's put this into integers, or into n fractions. So if you combine this all together, what is the sum of one quarter plus a negative two thirds? So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to start by having a lowest common multiple of four and three, and that is a 12. So again, here we go. Four times what gets a 12? That's a three. So one times three will be a three here. Three times four is 12, so two times four is eight. Now a negative times a positive means I'm going to have a negative eight there. Now that I have the same denominators, I can simply add the three plus the negative eight. Now there's eight negatives and three positives, so three of these negatives are going to disappear. Eight take away three leaves me with five negatives left over. So I have negative five over 12. The addition is the same as doing regular fraction addition, except that when you add the numerators, one or both of them can be negative, and you have to make sure that um, you take that in account when you add this part right here with the numerators. Okay, here we go. Negative 5 eighths plus negative 2 thirds. Since this is negative and this is negative, we know our answer is going to be negative, but let's talk with the lowest common multiple first. An 8 and a 3. The lowest common multiple of 8 and 3 is 24. So I've got to figure out how to get an 8 to a 24 and, and then the same thing to get the 5. So 8 times 3 is 24, so 5 times 3 is 15. That's a negative. That's a positive. When the signs are different, it remains negative. So this is going to be a negative 15 here. 3, I'll open that up. 3 times 8 is 24, so negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. Now, because these both have the same denominator, we can simply add them. A negative 15 and a negative 16. Think of this as being 16 reds, sorry, 15 reds and 16 reds. That gives you 31 reds, and we're in 24. So now, if you want to put that in, into a mixed form, you can do that too, just by using your ABC button. All right, here we go. 5 and 7. Lowest common denominator is going to be 35. So here's our setup right here. First, before we can begin, we have to make sure that we change everything into an improper fraction. So 5 times 4 is 20, and 20 plus 1 is 21. You ignore the negative sign when you change it into an improper fraction. 7 times 5 is 35, and 35 and 2 is 37. So that's the first thing you do. Improper, improper, just like we did before. Now, once you know this, lowest common multiple being 35, this is what you get. So I want you to take at this point and try to finish it off. So pause the recording and see if you can finish off this answer. All right, so we're back. So to get 7 to 35, I multiply by 5. So 21 times 5 is 147. Sorry, this is this, this back up. 5 times 7 is 35, so 21 times 7 is 147, and a negative times a positive is a negative. On this side, 7 times 5 is 35, so 37 times 5 is 185. Since they're both positives, this is positive also. Now, since they have the same denominator, they can be added now. Now, I've got 147 reds and 185 yellows. I have more yellows than reds, so I'm going to be positive when I'm done. I'll have yellows left over. So take the 185 yellows, 147 of them are going to cancel. So 185 take away 147 gives you 38. And 38 over 35 can be converted into 1 and 3 fifths. Okay, this is one I want you to try on your own. Remember, turn them both into improper fractions before you continue. So pause the recording and give this a try. Okay, lowest common multiple of 5 and 2 is 10. So here we go. 5 times 3 is 15, and 4 is 19, and it's a negative. 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 is 9, and it's a negative. So there's my improper form. Now I can figure out what to do with the, the numerators. To get a 5 to become a 10, I multiplied by 2. So 19 times 2 is 38, so this is going to be a negative 38. 2 times 5 is 10, 9 times 5 is 45. A negative times a positive is a negative. Now the denominators are the same, so I can simply just add them. 
Now, they're both negatives. This is a whole bunch of red tiles and a whole bunch of red tiles. Push them all together, and you'll have 83 of them. And that's the negative. And you could change that into an improper, sorry, a mixed fraction, if you want, of being negative 8 and 3 tenths. All right. The same rules for adding integers are used when adding decimals. So if you just do a little bit of a comparison here for you to look at. I've got negative 3, and i got 4 here. Now, I've got 4 yellows, 3 reds. So when they all cancel out, because I have more yellows, I'm going to have a positive answer, because there's yellows left over. So 4 yellows, and I'm going to cancel 3 of them out with these 3 reds. So 4 take away 3 is 1. So you notice that I subtracted here. To show me the work, you would put 4, and you subtract 3, and your answer is going to be 1. And then you apply the sign here. Now over here, we have a negative 3.1 and a 4.6. The same rationale and reason applies. I've got more yellows than reds, so my answer is going to be yellow. It's going to be positive. Now, this 4.6 yellows are going to cancel out with 3.1 of these reds. So I've got to subtract the 4.6 and take away 3.1. That gives me 1.5. Now, how do I show that? Here's your work over here. 4.6, take away 3.1, gives you 1.5. Okay, now you should notice that here and here are the same strategies. You just have to figure out which one has, or which tile is going to be left over, and then do your canceling. Now you only cancel when the answer, or when the numbers you're working with are positive and negative. If they're both positive or both negative, it won't work. You, have, you won't have any canceling. Here's an example of negative 3.46 and 7.1. They're both negative, which means that I'm going to be adding. And the result is going to be a, going to be a negative. So 3.46 plus 7.1 is what I'm going to set up. 4 and 6 is 6. Four, sorry, 6 and 0 is 6. 4 and 1 is 5. And 3 and 7 is 10, leaving me with 10.56. Now, remember, I had both negatives here. So my final answer is going to be negative 10.56. All right, you try this one. Okay, now, I get a negative and I got a positive, which means I'm going to be subtracting. There's more negatives than, sub than positives, which means my final answer is going to be a negative. So, I'm going to take and have a negative after I take the 4.67 and I take and cancel out the 3.1. So 4.67 take away 3.1 is the work I'm going to be doing. So that gives me 1.17. 7 take away 0 is 7. 6 take away 1, that should be a 5. I don't know why it's not a 5. And 4 take away 3 is 1. So you should have 1.57. So your answer, and there's a typo here, it should be negative 1.57. All right, so let's go over and talk about using your calculator. The calculator has a button on it, <coughs> which has a positive and a negative looking like this. This here is your positive negative fraction. Now be careful, um, don't use your, net, your subtraction button unless you know your calculator treats it as a subtraction. Some of them will not do that. They will treat it as a subtract, subtract, and then they'll give you what's called a calculation error. Sometimes the calculator will have a button that has a little negative inside some brackets. These are both your plus minuses. So you always default to being positive, and if you want to change it to negative, you just press it once, and your number will become negative. Depending on your calculator, you may have to press the negative first and then put the number in, or you may have to put the number in and then press the negative. Either way, you have to work with your own calculator, and I can't tell you the keystrokes. I can give you some help, though, on how to do it. Negative 5 plus 6. Now, it should give us an answer of positive 1, because we know there's more uh, positives than negatives. There's one more positive than negative, so we're going to have one positive left over. Now to add this, this is the keystrokes that most of them would do. You have to get some sort of a negative 5 put in. Now I don't know how your calculator does this. Some people go, neg go, go subtract 5 and then go plus 6 and press equals. Some of them have to go a negative 5 plus 6 is equals, and some have to go 5 and then change it to a negative and then go plus 6 and press equals. Your answer should come out to be positive 1. So try to see what keystrokes you need to do on your particular calculator. This is one of the reasons I don't like you guys uh, switching calculators for tests or borrowing, because I give you something 
which is you're not what you're not familiar with, and you can't do the question. So I want you to pause the recording, and I want you to try to do negative 4 plus 5, negative 7 plus negative 8, and negative 24 plus 13, and find out what answers you get. All right, here's your answers. This one, more positives than negatives, so it's going to be positive, and 9 take away 4 is 5. Here, they're both negatives, so it's a pile of negatives and a pile of negatives. There's 15, and they're all negative. 24 and 13, there's more reds than there are yellows, so you're going to have a negative. So when you subtract here, you get 11. So that's negative 11. So hopefully you everything came out correct. Now let's take a look at fractions. Fractions, you should have an ABC button of something of this sort on your calculator. Some of you might have like just A over B. Some of you might have box over box. I'm not sure what your calculator, uh, how it works. You'll have to make sure you take a look at your manual that came with your calculator to figure it out or experiment to figure it out. I will tell you on most of the Casios and the Texas Instruments to enter 2 over 3 in your calculator. You start by pressing the key 2, then you press the ABC, then you press the 3, then you press enter and you'll get some sort of a display which shows 2 over 3. All right? Now that can be 2 over 3, sometimes there's a little tiny uh, sort of like a corner bracket down below, but either way you get 2 over 3. Now if you want to put in a mixed number, so for example you want to put in 5 and 4 sevenths, you're going to press 5, ABC, then the numerator, then ABC, then the denominator, and then the last, uh, sorry, and then press equals. When you do that, you should get something that displays 5 and 4 sevenths in some sort of a manner. So to add, you put 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3, it's going to be 1 ABC2 plus 2 ABC3, and then press equals, and you should get 1 and 1 sixth. So I'd like you to try these, these questions and figure out whether you, how do you work with your calculator. So pause it and do these last two, this last one. All right, so you should have gotten 7 and 19 over 20. Now, to put the negatives in here, all you have to do is remember how you put negative 2 in. And when you get to that part, before you press your ABC button, make sure you have a negative 2 displayed. So this may be pressing negative and then 2 and then ABC3, or it could be 2, then press the negative and then go ABC3. I'm not sure what your calculator does. But I'd like you to try to do all of these, please. So pause the recording and see how you can do with these. All right, here we go. So negative 2 ABC3 plus 5 ABC7 gives you 1 over 21. 4 ABC7 plus negative 6 ABC11, 2 over 77. Negative 3 ABC1 ABC2 plus negative 2 ABC1 ABC3 gives you negative 5 and 5 6. Negative 5 ABC5 ABC6 plus 4 ABC1 ABC3 gives you 1, negative 1 and a half. Okay, so here's your assignment, or some modification which I'll give you in classroom. So, until next time, we'll see you later.